Hey, what's up? Tim Warner here. And if you've heard the news from the Microsoft Ignite conference, you know about Azure Arc. At least you know the name and maybe you've heard a couple marketing related sentences. The long story short is that Azure Arc is a growing product family that allows you to manage on-premises resources with Azure tools, things like Azure policy and role-based access control and taxonomic tags. I'm intentionally starting fresh here with you because this exercise is going to be learning by doing, configuring Azure Arc for servers. The desktop you're looking at right now is a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine that I've named DC1. It's running in a work group. It's very bare bones. But this is running not in Azure, but in my local office network environment. And our goal is to learn how to use Azure Arc to onboard this virtual machine for management in Azure. I've normally looked at management in the opposite way. For instance, you would use your on-premises management tools and say a site-to-site -site virtual private network to manage your Azure VMs using on-prem. This is kind of the opposite scenario where we're extending Azure tools back into on-prem and we can manage our on-premises machines using the same framework that we do our other native Azure resources. So I've logged into the Azure portal here with a management account with a global administrator in Azure AD and owner in my subscription. So I'm not going to be hung up by role-based access. And let me do a search for ARC. Here we've got Azure ARC and it looks like as of right now, it says bring Azure services and management to any infrastructure. Now we're just going to look at the scenario of managing an on-premises Windows server machine. You can also do Linux, by the way. But one of the additional value propositions here is that we can manage, for instance, Google Cloud Platform virtual machines and or Amazon Web Services virtual machines, containers and data platform services, all using Azure tools. And if I scroll down a bit, you see on the left here, this button allows us to jump into the server management now. And then we can, or I can, sign up for the preview of doing, looks like container and app-based management. And then there's data services, databases. So how do we get started? Let's go down the road of managed servers. And if it looks like I at all know what I'm doing, that is due to my friend and Pluralsight colleague, Michael Teske. Thanks, Michael, for showing me how to use ARC today during our call. And I'm immediately passing on that knowledge. What do you say? That's real practical education, isn't it? says here in the fine print, this again should give us some education. Ensure compliance across all your environments by adding your Linux and Windows virtual machines to Azure. Now, it just says machines. I don't know if, if there's roadmap here for physical or virtual. It may not matter. Once in Azure, you can leverage Azure management and governance and view and organize your inventory in one place. So there it is. Let's go to add. It looks like we've got two methods here. It says to connect machines both from on-prem and other clouds, deploy the Azure Connected Machine Agent. Select one of the options. Okay, so we've got an interactive script and then an option to add machines at scale. And if you click View Instructions, it takes you into a quick start. And it looks like we'll be using Azure PowerShell if you need to do large-scale agent deployment and machine onboarding. That makes sense. We're just doing one system here, so we'll do Generate Script for an individual machine. Let's see what it asks us to do. We'll specify our target parameters here. I'll choose my appropriate subscription resource group. And it looks like as of this recording on the 14th of November, 2019, Azure Arc for Servers is available only on West US 2, West Europe, and Southeast Asia. That's a minimal set of regions, but that hits all three sections of the world, doesn't it? So I'm going to choose West US 2. And as I said, you can onboard Windows or Linux servers. If I go to Windows, for instance, let's go next. I'm not using a proxy server in my environment, so we'll go next. We've got taxonomic tags. That makes sense. Next, review and generate. And what's it doing here? Let's scroll down. It says, first, we have to register our subscription before we connect our machines to ARC. Select the button. So register. Uh-oh. Registration request submitted. This may take several minutes. Are you serious? While we're waiting, let's take a look down at the bottom. Let me boost the font a little to make this easier for you to see. Run the following script with local admin permissions on any machine you're onboarding. Okay, we've got some PowerShell here and invoke web request. Now that's a controversial commandlet, let's face it, but okay, we'll overlook that. Where we're pulling down AKA MS Azure Connected Machine Agent and we're unpacking it as an out file. Okay, so an out file is an MSI, the traditional deployment package. Then the script's running MSI exec in quiet mode. And then we've got a connect command happening. 
Okay, so it's going to run an executable. And what's neat about this script is that it's customized to your environment. Notice that the code is dynamically populated my Azure AD tenant ID, location, and my subscription ID. Okay, so let me copy this to my clipboard. Oh, I thought I had VS Code on this machine. I guess I don't. Can you believe I'm going to have to do ISE? I haven't used this tool in a long, long, long time. I'll save this in my documents folder as arc on board. There we go. Let me minimize ISE and see what this download does. Oh, okay. It looks like it might have brought the same thing down. Onboarding script.ps1. Let me drag that to my desktop and let me open that up in ISE. Onboarding script. Same exact thing. That's weird. It said copy the code out and then there was a download button. What are you going to say about that? All right. Well, let's use the run script button here. Let's pull down that agent and let it install quietly. And then the real magic here is going to take place here on line eight when we attempt to register this virtual machine with our subscription and with the Azure Arc service. Okay. To sign in, use a web browser and enter the code to authenticate. Okay. Microsoft.com device login. I'll paste in that code. Use my administrative account here. It says you'll be signed in to the Azure Connected Machine Agent on a remote device or service. Okay, great. Let's minimize and come back. Okay, well, this errored out, and you want to know something? I'm not going to edit this out of the video because it's a good real-world example. It says that the deployment was disallowed by policy. Now, this is ironic because one of the value propositions of Azure Arc is that you can use Azure Policy to shape and govern your on-premises environment just like you do in Azure. Well, guess what? I do happen to have an allowed location policy called O'Reilly Allowed Locations that's preventing this because if I remember correctly, my policy is limited to East US and East US too. Ouch. So I'm going to need to pause the video, fix that policy snafu, and then we can restart. Okay. Well, through the magic of video editing, <laughs> what I did actually behind the scenes is I, I went back to the portal, removed that policy assignment temporarily, came back here, reran the script, and now as you can see, it says that onboarding could take up to six minutes, and after I authenticated again, it said successfully onboarded resource to Azure. I mean, it didn't take six minutes, honestly. It took probably under one minute. So let's minimize here, and you notice it already shows up in Azure. By the way, I got to this machines page just by searching for ARC, and your onboarded machines show up here. So there's DC1 connected. I'm in the West US 2. It's showing up as an Azure Arc machine. Let's go into DC1 and see what kind of trouble we can get into. We can verify our OS, our OS version, our agent version, tags. Okay, so we can add tags. Environment, dev, let's say. So that's cool. So we're adding tags to on-premises machines, which is really cool from a cost management standpoint, isn't it? Because we can use the cost management tool in the Azure portal to run reports based on tags. Tags can come into play in many, many different ways, can't they? Not a whole lot other here. There's logs, which is going to be our tie-in to Azure Monitor, log analytics, and the Custo query language. I imagine in time we're going to be able to incorporate on-premises Azure Arc machines in our Custo queries and alerts. And then we've got under operations, link in with Azure Policy. And we saw by virtue of my previous onboarding attempt failing due to policy, that's actually a perfect segue into this. The fact that our policies and resource compliance is now touching on-premises machines via Azure Arc. That's pretty darn cool as well. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to poke around a little bit in Task Manager and the Service Control Manager. I wish I had taken a snapshot so I could run a quick diff. I'm just kind of cruising through the list here. But I can see some services that certainly weren't here before, like the HIMDS, HIMDS, the hybrid, the Azure Hybrid Instance Metadata Service. There's a Microsoft Azure Site Recovery Service. I don't remember if I was doing Azure back up on this VM prior to onboarding it to Arc, to be honest with you. But I'd like to encourage you on your own to look at Task Manager, look at some of with the Sys internals tools, maybe Process Monitor, and let us know in the comments of this video or on Twitter, my handle is Tech Trainer Tim, what you find out. And then, then again, here is that Azure Hybrid Instance Metadata Service. These are going to be, it seems to me, hooks that make it possible for Azure Arc to manage this virtual machine. 
there's a service name called DSC underscore service, the guest configuration service. That's very interesting. Let me search online by right clicking and selecting the appropriate option. Azure Policy Guest Configuration. Yeah, so we're seeing several hooks that have come down from the cloud and are making this machine accessible and manageable from Azure. And in closing, let me just say that I have no site-to-site -site VPN. I have no express route circuit. I trust the traffic is happening on TCP 443, the TLS SSL port number. That would be something else. Perhaps the Sys internals tools like TCP view would be helpful. So let me know what you decide to contribute. In the meantime, I hope that you found this lesson helpful. My contact info, my Twitter handle, as I said, is Tech Trainer Tim. You can find my content at Pluralsight. Thanks a lot. See you later.